Hey, welcome back. With the perpetual faceting of the design industry, the role of design is becoming more and more democratic. People are learning how to solve their own problems in more and more specialized ways. In the past, crafts were the primary method of delivery of home goods and apparel to the masses. Due to the emergence of mass manufacturing, though, the dynamic limited the accessibility of crafts to highly specific markets. The most specialized products, such as mobile devices, technology, and other things one couldn't make on their own are becoming the primary purchase items. The balance of purchases are assets to solve some of the problems that can be solved independently of consumer culture itself. Some of the best practices are being left out for emotional appeal. How does the designer fit into this emerging paradigm? Certainly your average person isn't going to go out and make their own cell phone, coffee maker, or dish rack, but video channels like YouTube are connecting makers together in new ways that can empower people to try, at least as far as basic product one-off production goes. Things like injection molding for a family of four is still a reach, but things like 3D printing start to make complex product designs more and more feasible for your average consumer to assemble themselves. If product design is flattening and becoming more and more democratized, this isn't a threat, it's an opportunity. Designers can become beacons of knowledge and efficiency. Designers have a rare opportunity to step out of the way of the consumer to help gently guide them to a more personal experience. With this, designers can steward consumers towards best practices and platforms that offer up products with spaces for personalization. You wouldn't hand a gun to someone who didn't know how to use it, right? Likewise, you wouldn't expect the average consumer to know what design rules they should follow right out of the gate. This is the opportunity to create streams of knowledge that consumers can follow to help them understand the best practices in curating their personal possessions that warrant customization. DIY culture in the last 20 years has shown exponential growth through catalysts like Maker Fair, 3D printers, craft culture, and so on. People are realizing that they have the capability to customize their ecosystem of personal artifacts to their own liking. Shops such as Shapeways, Redbubble, Teespring, and others are empowering people to upload designs and within a week or so, get back personalized items that are truly their own. For example, looking at Teespring, the commodity of the raw t-shirt then becomes the area where the designer can focus, while the print that goes on the shirt has space for customer-specific art. For something more three-dimensional, products like Suguru are allowing customized ergonomic additions to products that already exist. Again, the designer is given the chance to create the platform where the customization takes place, such as a handle for a camera, or a spoon that has a wiggly handle to it, or putting bumpers on a hard drive so that it doesn't get damaged when it hits the ground. And maybe that's the idea. Instead of force-feeding products into an economy, designers and consumers will and should work in a more symbiotic relationship of platform plus customization to move general goods into a space where you really can please everyone. Send me some of your thoughts. What are some of the platforms that you consider to be friendly to both designers and consumers alike? How are ways that you see DIY culture informing what gets designed by designers versus made by consumers? Let me know. Send me a note on Twitter and Instagram and I'll post some of the best insights and projects. Thanks so much. Have a great day.